Frequently ridiculous, occasionally offensive, always hilarious. An 18-wheeler spins out of control, and it's all like, BRASH! In this huge tanker full of diamonds, crawl, crawl. Those aren't ideas, those are special effects. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 South Park celebrity impersonations. You don't <laughs> talk to me like that, <laughs> you little piece of shit! <laughs> For this list, we cast our eye over Trey Parker and Matt Stone's funniest, most offensive, and most accurate celebrity portrayals on this long-running cartoon comedy. Okay, let's get this meeting started. Number 10, Saddam Hussein. Hello, Satan. Saddam. Did you miss me, buttercup? Gay, sadistic, and sexually promiscuous, Saddam features heavily in South Park's feature film as one of the main antagonists. Meet Saddam Hussein, my new partner in evil. <laughs> the former president of Iraq is given a whiny, high-pitched voice, as well as the typical slit-head appearance usually saved for Canadian characters. I don't know about you, but this video's getting me pretty hot. Saddam. Here, have another drink. His first appearance saw him try to take over Canada, but a mass fart killed him. This sent him to hell, where he presumably began his romantic relationship with Satan. Hey, Satan! I got some new luggage for our trip up to Earth! Let's f to celebrate! What's it like up on Earth, Saddam? Tell me about it again. Ah, uh, let's not talk. Let's get busy! All in all, his was a fitting reimagination of one of the most hated men of the 20th century. Well, fitting for South Park in any case. Hello and welcome! We're glad you made it, brother! We're just about to do a play about how much stealing hurts you deep inside. Come join us! Yes, Come on. Go. You're here forever! No! N no! Number 9, Bono. Hello everyone, I, I am, am Bono. Bono. Apparently Bono is not just the lead singer of U2, he is also an actual, literal piece of crap. When Randy Marsh takes a record-setting crap, he steals the title away from, you guessed it, Bono who is none too pleased, let us tell you. He can't beat my nine and a half Turex. Well, he's going to jail. Fine, but he has to take the crap in front of you in Zurich. But then it's revealed that Bono hadn't previously taken the world's biggest crap. He is the world's biggest crap. The second talking piece of poo in the South Park universe, but the first to take the form of a human. Somebody's been keeping it a secret. Bono was never the record holder. He's the record. According to the show, it's his status as a hunk of excrement that explains why Bono can do so much good in the world, yet still appear like a huge turd. Bono could not be reached for comment as he is currently in Africa helping the needy. Number 8, Tom Cruise. So you're not the prophet, huh? You made me look stupid. I'm gonna sue you too. Well fine, go ahead and sue me. I will! I'll sue you in England! All aspects of Cruz's controversial personality and lifestyle are heavily parodied in the classic and controversial episode, Trapped in the Closet. Uh, 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 uh. The frozen alien bodies were loaded onto Xenu's galactic cruisers, which look like DC-8s, except with rocket engines. When he's led to believe that Stan is the reincarnation of Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard, Cruz sycophantically seeks his approval. L. Ron? L. Ron! It really is you! Oh, this is the greatest day of my life. Ah, uh, dude, I need to go to bed. He's utterly devastated when Stan admits he's not as good an actor as some others in Hollywood. So he barricades himself away and waits for various celebs to attempt to lure him out of the literal closet. Tom? Tom, it's Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Tom, don't you think this has gone on long enough? It's time for you to come out of the closet. Likely as a form of retaliation at the real Cruise, after he had a rerun of the episode Banned, poor old Tom gets it again in some later episodes, where he is, again, quite literally, packing fudge. Hey guys, check it out! Tom Cruise is a fudge packer! What did you call me? Hey, that is Tom Cruise! How come you're packing fudge, Mr. Cruise? I'm not a fudge packer! Number 7, Michael Jackson. Here I am, blanket! Despite his alias of Michael Jefferson, it's obvious who South Park is targeting here. Guys, this is my dad, Michael Jefferson. Jefferson, Michael Jefferson, yeah. 
Hey, you want to play with me? The childish singer has made numerous appearances over the years, most notably in the episode where he moves to South Park to get away from the constant accusations of child molestation. I am sick and tired of people harassing Mr. Jefferson. All I've been hearing since Mr. Jefferson moved here are sick lies. That he molests children, that he's a bad father, that he had plastic surgery. It's ignorant. After his neglected son Blanket makes friends with Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman, Jackson tries to join the fun as a way of living out the childhood he missed. Would you like to ride the train with me and start a magical journey? Yes, I would. Mr. Jefferson, you're so awesome. Mr. Jefferson. Even as a ghost or a hologram, the infantile Jackson can't deal with what people say about him. So ignorant. Hey! Appears to be just a hologram, sir. No, it's ignorant. You don't understand. We have to stop them. <laughs> Number six, Barbara Streisand. Hey, no wonder that Barbara Streisand lady wanted it. Oh, <laughs> who is that? Oh, just this really, really old lady who wishes she was still only 45. <laughs> <laughs> the singer has been cited as Matt Stone and Trey Parker's most hated celebrity, and she certainly gets one of the more abstract treatments of any famous person. Depicted as Mecha Streisand, she destroys South Park after obtaining an ancient artifact from the boys by torturing them with her singing. I don't know how much more I can take, dude. All right, you asked for it. I'm gonna tell you now. No! It takes the likes of Leonard Maltin, Sidney Poitier, and Robert Smith of The Cure to eventually destroy her with their kaiju transformation abilities. But Tom Cruise and his fellow pissed off celebrities later revive her. Great Scott, it's Barbara Streisand! Oh. I thought Barbara Streisand had been destroyed by the Robert Smiths. This time, only a duet with Neil Diamond can mollify the gargantuan robot musical diva. Well, that's because I loved you, girl. And I still love you now, what have you got to say? Number 5, Al Gore And someday, when the world is rid of Man Bear Pig, everyone will say, thank you Al Gore, you're super awesome. Poor Al has done a lot of good in his career, but if that were to stop Matt Stone and Trey Parker from mocking the former vice president, what kind of satirists would they be? This is the end of you, Man Bear Pig. Depicted as unstable and almost insane when it comes to a search for the imaginary man-bear pig, Gore is sometimes seen as wearing a cape while running around, pretending to fly. I've killed MVP, and now I must save the world from something else. Maybe I'll make a movie. A movie starring me. Then people will take me super serial. Excelsior! Speaking in an effeminate manner, Gore is perfectly detached from reality. Living in a world where an animal can be half man, half bear, and half pig all at the same time. It is a creature which roams the earth alone. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. Number four, Paris Hilton. I don't get it. What does she do? She's super rich. But what does she do? She's totally spoiled and snobby. What does she do? She's a hog. Hilton is perhaps the definition of a celebrity. She's only really famous for being famous, and the South Park creators really let her have it. Constantly coughing up semen, she's shown to be the stereotypical image of a whore. Sorry if I'm a little spent. I did a whole lot of partying last night with a lot of different guys. <coughs> All of her previous pets have committed suicide, so she buys butters and stuffs him into a bear suit as her next victim. Uh. My sort of girlfriend dressed me up like this. Your girlfriend? There you are, Mr. Biggles. Oh, I thought I'd lost you. Promise you'll never leave me. To top it off, she enters a whore off with Mr. Slave, which ends with the wonky eyed heiress being inserted into his rectum. In the South Park world, perhaps that's a fitting end for Paris. My God, it's so gross. Let me out of here! Number three, Russell Crowe. Born in New Zealand in 64, a hot-headed actor named Russell Crowe. He loves to act, but he loves one thing more, fighting around the world. This Australian actor aptly has a show called Russell Crowe Fighting Around the World, and that title really says it all. Fighting around the world. Russell
also Crow. Crow randomly beats up people who are even slightly critical about his work, and even a few who aren't, to be honest. Dude, the director said to cut it. My fault in his poetry! You don't edit Russell Crowe's poetry, you testicle! <laughs> Along with his good friend Tugger, a boat, the incredibly offensive Australian beats up folks that he calls Chinamen, black people, and scrotums. Oh my god, it's Russell Crowe! Oh my god! Why don't you mind your own business, you scrotum? <laughs> Perhaps worst of all, he even beats up a cancer patient in a misguided attempt to fight cancer itself. Well, we couldn't find cancer, but we found a man with cancer! Take uh, that, cancer! And uh, that! <laughs> even poor Tugger grows tired of Crow's antics in the end. Take your love, so I gotta take it. Number 2. Mel Gibson How dare you call me crazy! This means war! <laughs> He's totally insane, and one of the few South Park characters to have his real face used for his parody. Jesus, oh how I love you, how I love you, Jesus! When Stan and Kenny travel to Gibson's house to get their money back for the Passion of the Christ, he promptly strips off and asks the boys to torture him. Ha! Ah, so you do intend to torture me, huh? Well, go ahead! Do your worst! You still won't get your ticket money back! I can take whatever you can dish out! Now with the Braveheart blue face paint, Gibson chases the boys back to South Park, where he insists that the whole town torture him. I guess now you're gonna start torturing me! Ugh! Oh, my nipples are so tender, don't squeeze them anymore! That's Mel Gibson? He's hilariously sadistic, and ends this brilliant episode by, well, doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and to think, this episode actually came out two years before Gibson's reputation went down the tubes. Give me my $18! Mel Gibson! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Her favorite foods are skeddy and butter, and she likes drinking Red Bull and Mountain Dew. I'm only six and I've already had three heart attacks, girlfriend! Something's wrong. Look out! My god, I didn't even see him! Nice work, Zimmerman! Dude, the ass face of Sun is Ben Affleck! Oh, our little Ben! Oh, I'm so happy! <laughs> wow, I never realized Ben had TPS, but I definitely see the resemblance now. <laughs> it's one of them! That thing's from Jersey, too! <laughs> what is it? It's called a Snooky! It's very famous! Yeah, 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 yeah! I am Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah! Lord, Lord, come in, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah! Number one. Kanye West. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? I'm the most talented musician in the world. If I was a homosexual or a fish, I would know. Never have fish dicks been so funny. Well, unless you're Yeezy. No, because you said you like fish dicks, Kanye. Don't, don't you get it? You see, fish dicks is a, is a play on words. Apparently, Kanye is the only one who doesn't understand the childish gag as he goes on a murderous rampage in his attempt to have the joke explained. I ain't gonna hurt you. I pay people to do that for me. Oh shit, oh no man, come on, I got no dick, man! He eventually sets his ego aside and accepts his life as a gay fish. Now content with his newly found sexuality, he wastes no time mingling with other seafaring creatures. I wanted to be free with other creatures like me and now I got my wish. Cause I know that I'm a gay fish, gay fish. Of course, he eventually reforms and instead decides to marry a hobbit. If she was here, you could all see for yourself how beautiful she is. But she can't be here because she has a movie coming out on Friday, directed by Peter Jackson, called The Hobbit. This depiction perfectly captures the rapper's egotistical nature, while throwing in just enough trademark South Park randomness to make this the ultimate celebrity send-up. My girl ain't no hobbit. Please God tell me I'm not engaged to no hobbit. Do you agree with our list? When you're a clown, nobody takes you seriously. Which South Park celebrity parody always tickles your funny bone? Hmm? Does Bono want to be the... <laughs> For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Tiger's whistle's blowing, means we must be going. No more Russell Crowing for you.